If you're new to woodworking and you're not quite sure which bits to buy first, let me show you the five that I recommend. The first bit, and the one that's easiest for beginners to learn with, is the roundover bit. Roundover bits are designed to round over or ease sharp edges. Roundovers come in many different sizes, and each one can be adjusted in the router to remove as little or as much material as the capacity of the bit will allow. For example, here is one pass with a half inch or 12 mil roundover bit. And here's that same bit, just now lowered slightly in the router. As you can see, each bit can produce a different look simply by raising it or lowering it in the router. When it comes to the different sizes, it helps to understand that roundover bits are sold by the size of the radius that the bit can cut. For example, if we look at a half inch roundover bit, you can see that the half inch refers to the measurement from this point to this point. If we compare that now to a 3 8 or 9 mil roundover, you can see that the radius is slightly smaller. So how do you choose the right bit for you? Well, it helps to start by thinking about what types of projects you're going to be working on. Are you planning on building large projects that need large roundovers? Or maybe you're just doing smaller projects that really only require just taking off the very edge. If you're uncertain about what you're going to be doing, let me recommend either a quarter inch or a three eighths roundover bit. Both these bits are very universal and work on a lot of different projects. Before we move on, I do want to quickly talk about the shank size differences you've been seeing in the bits we've looked at so far. The shank is the part of the bit which gets installed into the router. The shank sizes here in the US are either a quarter or a half inch. Most smaller routers accept only quarter inch, while most other routers accept quarter and half inch. Why you may choose one over the other is mostly based on the size of the bit itself and preference. I personally order more half inch shank than quarter inch simply because I find that they actually function better, especially when you're spinning large bits. But don't get worried about it too much because over time you're going to figure out what works best for you and for the routers that you have. The second bit to look at is a straight cutter. Straight cutters are mainly designed to cut straight dados, grooves, or mortises in the middle of the wood. Straight cutters cut on the sides of the bit as well as the bottom. What this does is it allows you to plunge the bit into the wood first and then move in any direction. When it comes to sizing, straight cutters come in different diameters as well as different lengths. It just all depends on how deep you need to be cutting. The most common standard straight cutter comes with two flutes or cutting surfaces and you can see them here. More advanced cutters like the spiral upcut has three flutes which cuts much more smoothly and cleaner than a standard two flute bit. Upcut bits are unique as they actually lift the waste material up and out of the groove instead of leaving it behind to build up. Therefore, if you think you're going to be doing a lot of mortising which requires deep cuts, a spiral upcut bit may be the best option for you. If you're just getting started and you don't want to spend a lot of money right now, I would recommend buying a standard either quarter inch or half inch straight cutter. The third bit to look at is a chamfer bit. These bits, like roundover bits, are designed to be used on the edges of wood. Chamfer bits cut 45 degree angles and what's nice about these bits is that you can adjust the depth of the bit to change the look or the amount of chamfer. The other type of bit worth mentioning here is an edge bevel. And I only bring this bit up because it looks very similar to a chamfer bit and it can easily be confused for one. Edge bevel bits cut a bevel that runs the whole width of the edge, unlike the chamfer that only cuts a small portion of the edge. They're not as popular as the chamfer bit, but they do come in many different options and generally they cut bevels anywhere between 7 and 30 degrees. Again, this is not a bit that I recommend you buy right now and personally I've never had the need for one, but I at least wanted to make you aware of it. When it comes to buying your first chamfer bit, the most common size and the one that I recommend is a 5 8 or 16 mil cutting length. The length is this measurement here. So be sure that that measurement is noted on the product before you purchase one. The fourth bit to look at is the rabbit or rebate bit. This bit along with the roundover and the chamfer bits are all designed to work on the edge of the material. This bit really has one job. 
and that is to cut a rabbit or a rebate, which is a groove with two sides that is open to the edge. Rabbits are great for creating different types of joints and they also can be used to conceal edges of paneling like this. The two bits that I have here both cut a 3 8 or 9 mil groove, which is this measurement here. The only other difference outside of the shank size is the depth of cut. This bit cuts a 3 8 deep rabbit and the other one cuts a half inch. When it comes to buying a rabbit bit, some companies like Freud sell bits that come with multiple bearings so that you can swap them out to change the bit's depth of cut. Other bits don't come with that option and what you buy is what you get. Whatever option you decide to go with, I think you'll be just fine. I do want to tell you though that for the most part, a 3 8 rabbit bit has been my go-to for 90% of my work. The last bit is the flush trim bit. Flush trim bits are used to follow a pattern or trim off excess material when working with veneers. If you look closely at the two styles I have here, both of them have bearings which are flush with the cutters. What this does is allows the cutters to cut flush to the surface that the bearing is riding on. However, what is different is the location of the bearing. The first one has the bearing on the top while the other one has the bearing on the bottom. The difference is that one trims with the template or pattern on the top while the other trims with the template or the pattern on the bottom. Why the difference? Well, it just all depends on preference and what types of operations you're going to be performing. The only downside to using a top bearing flush trimmer is that when you are following a pattern, if you accidentally tip the router slightly, the cutter will gouge the workpiece. But if you make that same mistake with a bottom bearing bit, the bit will actually move away from the workpiece, which means all you have to do to fix your mistake is to make another pass. If you're going to be making curves or custom patterns or duplicating things like legs on a table or parts of a chair, the flush trimmer is the bit to have. There are a ton of options out there for flush trimming bits, including these amazing spiral bits that perform really well, but they're also very expensive. Therefore, I would recommend starting with a standard two flute half inch diameter bit. The five bits that we just covered in my opinion are the most commonly used, but that doesn't always mean that they're perfect for you. So I do encourage you to do your own homework, but regardless of what your future looks like in woodworking, if you continue with it, I guarantee these five bits will be in your shop. I'll leave all my recommendations below in the notes section. I'll also leave a link to my favorite bit set, which includes an extra bit from the one we talked about today, which is the Cove bit. And this by far is my favorite bit set to buy. Be sure to follow me on Instagram if you have any questions or would like to share videos or photos with me. That is the platform that has been working the best. Thank you for watching. I'll see everybody in the next video.